What's up, everybody? I'm going to go ahead and take you through um, a different setup for ankle dorsiflexion pails and rails. So as a, just a quick reminder, um, combat base, uh, using a slant board uh, just on the floor, just like this, classic uh, uh, soleus uh, stretch. So any of those are options within the same isometric protocol, the same exact contractions, just a little bit different from position to position. What I'm going to show you on here, uh, and lastly, remember, you could be using even the banded distraction ideally before this or right now during your passive stretch and then into your pails and rails, maybe even with the band. It's up to you if that works out well for you. So first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and get one foot up there. I do like when, I'm, when you're ready for it, I do like actually getting after dorsiflexion within hip flexion as well. And as much even um, knee flexion as possible. So it kind of recreates any of those deeper squats or any of those positions that you might be working on. Just kind of getting as much specificity as possible. Now you see a lot of people with this, dropping this on here. First thing is just to find the stretch and we're gonna go two minutes passively, nice big deep breaths. So you'll see a lot of people actually using this for their um, pails and rails to actually give them a little bit more out of the passive stretch. Remember, whether you have a, a higher arch or a flatter foot, it's going to be a little bit different for you. For having a higher arch for myself, I need to let my midfoot kind of drop a little bit to the ground a little bit more than maybe others, and then I'll be able to sink into more of the sensation I'm looking for. The opening angle is the back side of the joint, so anything in the heel, the bottom of the foot, uh, the low part of the calf, um, the higher part of the calf, most likely it's going to be really right in the middle of your calf um, towards the bottom or at the top of the Achilles. That's the most common spot to really be feeling this. And we can just breathe into it. When you're putting this on you, make sure that you're not putting it here because then it just becomes a downward force really into your hip. If it's further out, it's going to actually drive your knee over the toe which is really what we're looking for. In terms of spinal positioning, it's not what we're training right now, but just like when we're even getting in hip flexion, it's something that we can add focus to or intent to really make it more specific to the position we're really working on. So if you're working on having a front squat, having your chest up is not a bad idea at all. Now, say we were in it for two minutes, we're gonna do a big deep breath in. <sighs> Exhale everything out. Sniff some air in, get some good IAP and tension all around your core. You're going to start driving your foot down into the uh, bench. I want you to try to be really heavy on all three points of contact. I want you to feel your calf actually doing the majority of the work. So right now I'm working as hard as I can to push down into the bench using my calf. I can feel it burning. If you feel your hamstring working at all during either portion, that's okay because it's just keeping me flexion. We're going to ramp this up to 100%. Once you get there, hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Big deep breath in. Exhale. Relax that contraction. Now go into your, pay, your rails. You're going to use your shin and pull yourself deeper into the stretch. I like to take this away for this portion. Try to really use all of this stuff to drive your knee further over it. You can think about pulling your toes towards your knee at the same time and really feeling the stretch increase. If something needs to happen to the ankle, like I mentioned, either dropping towards the ground or screwing in to get you more of the stretching sensation on the back of the ankle, that's great. Individualize it to your ankle and foot. Hold that for three, two, and one sink all the way in. We should be a little bit further than we were at the start of this. So you're going to sink in, stay here, take some big deep breaths. You can put that back on and get as far into it as you can and spend at least three to five breaths within that deeper stretch. And then when we're done with that, then we can go into actually implementing some specific training to really save the work that our pails and rails did. As always, progressively overload. Maybe the next time you do two rounds, maybe you spend four minutes in the first time, five minutes in the second time. Just keep track of these little metrics that you have and make sure that you're feeling the backside stretching, the front side working to pull you deeper into it. When you know you did it right, during the rail sensation, the stretch in the back will increase. That's you really successfully doing this exercise. 
Give that a try and let us know how it goes.